Hey guys, this is Mike Chen. Thanks so much for watching the Chen News and here's what's going on. According to the Europe News, Iran's education department is banning teachers from the classroom and not for violating school rules or doing anything crazy, but for being cross-eyed or having severe acne or eczema, burn marks or less than 20 teeth and, and women with facial hair. And that's just the outside stuff because you're also not allowed to teach for things like a female infertility or cancers, bladder stones, or color blindness. And here's where it gets really ironic. So so in that part of the world, in that country, you're supposed to cover up, I think, to be less desirable. But then if you're not desirable enough, you can't teach. Is that basically what this new rule is saying? Also, just in case this guy wanted to teach something in Iran, sorry bro, can't have you. I mean, I, I really just, just don't understand. Severe acne and, and what's up with the whole teeth count? I mean, why is 20 the magical educational teeth requirement? And does that include wisdom teeth? Of course, I, I'm not from Iran, so I would love to hear from some of you who may understand why they would impose these just ridiculous rules. I mean, was this created by just, just some really stupid people or is there some other significance that I don't know about? And apparently these rules are not new. But after the list was published by the Fars news agency, there was a ton of outcry on social media about just how ridiculous this all is, which prompted an advisor to President Hassan Rouhani to promise the list would be investigated. And the most updated news was that a spokesman for the education department told the Tehran Bay it's my newspaper that measures specifically targeting women will be removed and the rest of the list will be reviewed. So facial hair is now okay, but you still can't have less than 20 teeth or, or acne because that's just so important when you're teaching, you know, algebra. Next up, let's talk about the actor I like to call the Tom Hanks of Asia, Chao Young fat And this is not because they look alike. Sorry, I just had a mental image of Chao Young fat as Forrest Gump. But anyway, I think they're similar because they're both known as extremely nice individuals. So in the wake of Typhoon Hato hitting Hong Kong, they're is of course a lot of cleanup that needs to be done. And a Hong Kong resident spots this dude in a jacket just out there cleaning up trees one morning. And that guy turns out to be Chow Yun Fat. Also, I really wanted to give this uh, picture taker some credit, but I really can't find his account anyway. But good eye, sir. Anyway, Chow Yun Fat later told Apple Daily that he was driving home when he saw Typhoon Hato's trail of destruction. He said there were these fallen trees blocking the road, so he got out of his car and picked them up so that people could use the roads again. Like I said, just a really good guy. And God of Gamblers, you gotta watch that. And finally, this is a story that has been blowing up, and there are a few versions of this. So, it was first reported that ESPN removed an Asian play-by-play -play caller from the broadcast of the September 2nd game in Charlottesville, Virginia, which has become the center of violent clashes this month during a white supremacist gathering. They removed him because his name happened to be Robert Lee, the same as a Confederate general whose statues are being taken down across the country. And at first, it was reported that ESPN removed the announcer because it would offend the local audiences which, if true, would make absolutely no sense. But after the story blew up, ESPN issued a statement that said the decision was made by them and Lee together, and it was made to prevent him from becoming a meme and made fun of and overall for his safety. So here's what they said. We collectively made the decision with Robert to switch games as the tragic events in Charlottesville were unfolding simply because of the coincidence of his name. In that moment, it felt right to all parties. It's a shame that this is even a topic of conversation, and we regret that who calls play-by-play -play for a football game game has become an issue. So in general, everyone is calling out ESPN and ridiculing them about their decision to remove Lee from the game. And here's my thoughts on all this. I feel like the story has two sides. If indeed the purpose of removing Lee was because ESPN wanted to appease and not offend the local audience in Charlottesville, then this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So what, if a player is also named Robert Lee, you're gonna not have him play either? But the other side of this, I think, is this. If this statement, if ESPN's statement is true, and according to the Washington Post, supposedly ESPN and production staff spoke with Lee about their concerns that he would be exposed to social hectoring and trolling, among other potential fallout from participating in the game. And even Lee himself expressed some personal trepidation about the assignment. So my thing is, if ESPN didn't force Lee to not participate in the game, let's say they approached him, they told him their thoughts and what might happen, and Lee just said, you know what, it's okay, I'm just gonna participate in the game. And then ESPN was like, okay, that's cool, that's your own decision. Or if Lee said, you know what, you're kinda right, I don't really feel comfortable going into the game with with my name and I feel like I would be made fun of, then that's just his decision and we should all respect that. Because here's the thing, as an Asian with a sort of a weird name for the most of my life, I faced a lot of ridicule. And for those of you who don't know, my Chinese name is X-I-N-G, which in Chinese is pronounced Xing. But as I was growing up, I was called everything from Zing to Xing. And when the crossing signs came out later, I was called crossing. I was made fun of constantly because of my name. And it finally got to the point where my dad forced me to change it to something else. So then I picked Mike. 
So to me, if another person don't want to put themselves out there because they don't feel very comfortable, because they feel like there would be a possibility that they would be trolled, that they would become famous for all the wrong reasons, then I totally understand. That's his own decision. And some people might say, well, he should have made a stand. He should have gone out there and just did his job. And then whatever happens, happens. But again, this is about a single individual in his comfort level. And it was indeed a decision made by both sides. And I'm okay with this. And so far, Lee hasn't responded to any press inquiry. So I guess we will get his side of the story when it comes out. Of course, all this is just my own personal opinion. And I really want to know yours. So let me know what your thoughts on the story is in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'll see you later.